Hey guys, Jay here. So today we're gonna take a look at a very interesting amplifier. This is the Galleon TSA75 power amplifier by none other than Thomas and Stereo that you may know very well and I know very well as well because he used to review hi-fi gear. Now he has a brand called Galleon and this is probably the first actual review that I'm doing for Galleon. So, this is interesting um, because also this amplifier is coined or self-proclaimed as the giant killer. So definitely was interested and get this, this amplifier retails for 1,500 US dollars, which makes it a very attractive price point. But the question is, does it actually kill giants? Now, right off the bat, the Galleon TSA A75 for $1,500 is an absolute killer of an amplifier. It sounds great, and you will see soon as well, the internals are kind of interesting. But in terms of the outside, the outside aesthetic doesn't scream giant killer or you know high value per se. It just looks like a normal amplifier. Not saying the build quality is bad. It has good heat sinks, and it's a properly designed you know outer chassis. It's just that there's few elements that kind of bother me because I had this for several months now. So this is kind of like a long-term review. And in those several months, there are things that bother me that may bother you that I feel like is worth noting. One, this is small, but the logo isn't quite the same as the online one. It's not exactly in the middle. And I'm not sure if that bothers you, but personally for me, staring at the logo, it once I noticed it, it kept bothering me. The second thing is the blue LED light. It's too bright for me. And when I turn down the lights, especially at night and just try to kind of relax, I ended up putting like duct tape on it. So that's a solution. But yeah, that light, I wish it can be dimmed or just a little bit more low key. It's a little bit too bright for my personal liking. But really what makes this amplifier special is in the inside. Now, if you look on in the inside, you'll find that this is a dual mono design, meaning that it's a fully balanced amplifier. So you will see two Toyota transformers, one for the left channel and one for the right channel. And you only see the top one on camera because they're stacked on top of each other. So there's two Toyota transformers, one per each channel. And on top of that, what makes it even more interesting is that the filtering capacitors, which is also stacked on top of each other, and also on the side as well, there's just a lot of filtering capacitance on this amplifier. In total, it adds up to 200,000 microfarad of capacitance, which is a lot and kind of unheard for this price range. Correct me if, if you find something else that has higher capacitance at this price point. Now, to put it into relative context, the legendary Corel KSA50 designed by Dendextino only had 160,000 microfarads, which is 40,000 microfarads less than the Galleon. Now I say only 160,000, but that's still a lot for a medium sized amplifier. And if you actually look at the Galleon TSA A75, it kind of does remind you of that Krell KSA 50 kind of design. Now it's also interesting to note that the Krell KSA 50 now sells in the used market after years, decades of its release for more than the suggested MSRP price of the Galleon. And in terms of capacitance, there's only one amplifier that comes to mind in around this price range that has more capacitance than even the Galleon, and that is the highly praised by me, the Denifrips Thalo, which had 200,400 microfarads of capacitance. But that retails for about $600 more at about 2,150 US dollars or so. So it's a little bit more than the Galleon. But what's odd to me is that the Galleon, despite having similar capacitance and chunky toroidal transformers like the Thalo, only outputs 75 watts into 8 ohms and 100 watts into 4 ohms. Whereas the Thalo, outputs 120 watts into 8 ohms and 220 watts into 4 ohms. Now, I personally found that particularly interesting because when you look inside the Galleon, everything suggests that this is a powerhouse that can drive literally any speaker out there with dedicated Toyota transformers per channel and 
200,000 microfarads of capacitance, it also just towards a powerhouse. But it actually outputs not that much power and much less than the fallow, which I found interesting. But subjectively speaking, when I was putting the Galleon TSA-A75 through its paces with many speakers, and I mean many speakers that you may use with it, I personally found that the Galleon had more gut, more power. And that to me was interesting because again, this only has 75 watts per channel into eight ohms, and it doesn't even double into four ohms. It's 100 watts at four ohms. So to me, it was a little bit baffling how powerful this amplifier sounded subjectively considering what's on paper. Now this amplifier in terms of features, it doesn't have that much. It's clearly a very simple power amplifier, but you do get both balanced and RCA inputs because this is a truly balanced amplifier. And I did prefer using the XLR input in this case in comparison to the RCA because it just sounded better, sounded cleaner, more dynamic. And I would just stick with XLR for this particular amplifier. It does make a small difference, not a huge one, but I personally did prefer the XLR over the RCA every single time. Now, not much of a feature per se, but I guess a feature with this amplifier is that it really works well with many of the streamer and DACs in the market. And I think that's by no accident. One thing that we are forgetting is that Thomas used to review a lot of the hi-fi stuff in the market. So he must have, and I know for a fact that he goes to his friend's places all the time. He came to my place to R&D and listen and see how it works with different gear in different rooms. And that can't be ignored because when I tried various different sources from the Eversolo DMP-8, the A6, all the modern DACs from SMSL, as well as you know, some of the DACs that I have here, they all worked reasonably well. And Thomas is big on synergy. So I think this is something that he has considered and it's hard to not think that way because everything I throw at it, it sounds good to exceptional, especially considering the price of these streamers and DACs uh, in, in around the same price range, it works just amazingly well together. In fact, throughout this review process, I stuck with the Eversolo DMP A8, using it as a streamer, DAC, and preamplifier going straight into the Galleon TSA A75, for the most part. I tried other combinations as well, but this is what I used to compare all the different speakers in around the price point of the Galleon TSA A75 in this video. Now, very quickly explaining the overall sound signature of the Galleon TSA A75, it is a V-shaped sound, but it's probably the best V-shaped sound presentation I've heard in a long time. First of all, the bass is elevated, but in a good way. It is bold, rich sounding, sounds muscular, and it gives you the impression that it can literally drive any speaker out there. It is very, very powerful and monster house in that bass region. Now the mid-range is probably the most interesting part. Now, traditionally a V-shape entails that the high frequency and the bass is elevated while the mid-range is recessed a little bit. In this case, it's not recessed in the sense that it's reduced in volume, as much as that is pulled back in the sound stage. It's deep in the sound stage, so sometimes you need to crank it up to kind of bring it a little bit forward to into that sound stage and project. Um, and that gives it an interesting combination because when you're cranking the volume, you're not just cranking the mid-range, you're cranking both the bass and the treble. So you get this sensation of this amazing bold bass that's brought up along with that mid-range, making the mid-range and the bass presentation almost just perfect. The bass is bold and rich and textured and dynamic, just incredibly dynamic. And the mid-range is just very, very full sounding, smooth, not a hint of offensiveness. And that's a presentation I like. Some people might like it a little bit more edgy. This was just smooth sailing, beautiful vocals, beautiful tones. And you guys know I love my tones. The tone on the mid-range was fantastic. Now the strings and the vocals have this more heft to the sound, especially with some speakers, it's more evident. That heft really adds that a little bit more muscular tone and richness to the vocals and strings. It might not be the most accurate thing, but like just like some of those fiber speakers in a way, it adds a little bit of that more richness and boldness in the mid-range that can be really enjoyed. Now when it comes to the high frequency, that's interesting. 
I don't think the high frequency is elevated too much to where it's bright or shrill. In fact, I think Thomas was very selective in what part of the high frequency was elevated. And if so, it's done ever so slightly because I get this airy presentation, this open, uh, spacious presentation. And on some speakers, not all, I get this almost like firefly effect where it's like bloomy high frequency, if you know what I mean. And all the nuances are bloomed and spotlit, but it's not shouty or bright or shrill or offensive in any way. It's just floaty and detailed and nuanced, but not in an aggressive way. It's almost like a spacious kind of, um, you know, kind of floaty kind of sound that you get. It's hard to explain, but it's sweet sounding. It's really well done. The treble is refined. Uh, and I wouldn't say that it's the most refined treble, especially with some tracks, but definitely the most refined treble I've heard at this price point, other than some amplifiers like the Thalo. Now, in particular with the Thalo, I would say that it's refined, but more snappy than the Galleon. So in that sense, I feel like the attack and decay structure of the high frequency and the mid-range as well is more clean cut on the Thalo. And for me, it's as airy as the Galleon in a way. But the Galleon, again, is less offensive, especially at cranking levels with some tracks uh, that has that more treble kind of presence. And for me, I thought that depending on the track, I would prefer the Galleon versus a Thalo, and it also depends on the speaker pairing as well. I wouldn't say one is necessarily better than the other, and that says a lot because Thalo is more expensive, but Thalo is something that I really like. It's one of my favorite amplifiers in that price range, and I think Galleon gets very, very close. And I guess that's the thing about the term giant killer. It really depends on what you're comparing it with. If you compare it with something like the Denifer's Thalo that I regard really highly in this price category, then yes, the performance is head to head. Even though the Thalo costs a little bit more, it really depends on what you like better in terms of the presentation. Do you like the more balanced, a little bit more snappy presentation, the more clean cut presentation of the Thalo, or do you like the more V-shaped, a little bit more depth and soundstage of the Galleon? And also the speaker pairing is gonna matter quite a bit depending on what you're going for. But it did, the Galleon did straight up beat my Macintosh MC275 Mark VI. In my review of that amplifier, I mentioned this, that in terms of the audiophile performance, the Galleon straight up just demolished the Macintosh MC275 Mark VI. That costs 6,500 US dollars. So it, again, it depends on what you're comparing it with as well as your preference. But for me, yeah, the Galleon straight up beats some of my really expensive amplifiers that I've had in here, but also there are amplifiers that I personally like in around that price range that I think does compete very closely with the Galleon TSA A75. So like I mentioned, I tried a lot of different speakers that I thought people would use with the Galleon. So I tried speakers that were about $2,000 to $2,500 category, and I tried a lot of different speakers from that $1,000 to $1,500 mark category. And I also tried speakers that were like $500, $600. And I'm going to pick the ones that I think was the best match with the Galleon and also give you my personal favorite. And I'll also mention the ones that wasn't such a good match and starting out the Triangle Bro 3s, which it's personally a speaker that I absolutely love and looks great, especially for $500 a pair. But this pairing just didn't quite work out. I felt like this was a little bit too bright and just, just way too in your face with that treble. So personally, I didn't find this to be a good match. Now next was the Klipsch RP600M Mark II for $650. Now I actually tried the speaker right after the Triangle Bro 3s and I personally found the treble was much less bright, much more listenable. Still not my number one pick with the Galleon, but if you already have the RP600M Mark II, or the Mark I for that matter, I think it's a good match because it plays with the Klipsch sound, and I kind of don't like to use word fix with amplifiers fixing speakers, but it, in this context, it kind of does. The, High frequency isn't as bright as I know Klipsch to be. 
the base is more full and robust and re you really get that textured base out of these speakers that you really wouldn't have experience with other amplifiers um, with the RP600M Mark II especially. And that mid-range, the upper mid-range that can be shouty at times and a little bit too forward, that's pulled back into the sound stage with the Galleon. And that's one of the attributes of the Galleon amplifier is that it takes the mid-range and it's a little bit recessed versus the treble and the bass. So it's a bit of that V-shaped sound that Thomas likes, but the mid-range isn't as recessed in volume per se, it's just pulled back into the sound stage. So you get this great depth in sound stage. So whereas before with clips with other amplifiers, let's say like the Thalo even, with a more neutral presentation, would be too shouty and too forward in that upper mid-range with the Galleon, is pulled back into the sound stage and it sounds smooth. So it does favors for the clips and I think it's a great match because it makes the speaker actually sound a lot more listenable and even great for $650. So while I wouldn't go out of my way to recommend this specific speaker for the Galleon because it really isn't my favorite pairing, but if you already have the speakers, I will say that the Galleon TSA A75 definitely sounds good with the Klipsch RP600M Mark II than other amplifiers that are more neutral, in my opinion. Now going into that $1,000 mark is the Polk R200. Now this was a particularly interesting match with the Galleon, in my opinion, because the R200 sounded snappy, fast, and quick and tactile with deep, deep bass and really punchy, dynamic bass. The vocal was slightly recessed, again, back into the sound stage. So it needed a little bit volume to start getting that going and getting that level to balance itself and get that really amazing bass and treble along with that vocal. But I personally found that this pairing, if you want a little bit more quick and exciting sound out of the Polk R200, I thought this was an excellent match. Now going slightly up in price at $1,200 is the Galleon Voyager TL loudspeakers. Now this is a transmission line speaker by Galleon and considering that it's from the same brand, you would think it's a good match and it is. The bass is just unreal, uh, really deep, really extended, really thick, but it's not so like thick that it feels like it's bloated or anything like that. Um, I think the bass, I think majority of people will like. It's deep in extension, it's controlled, it's textured, and it's nice. But when it comes to the mid-range, that's something I think some people might like and some people may not. The strings and vocals have this heft to them, and they have this kind of um, almost a little bit rounded off attack and decay. So you don't quite hear that snap and attack and decay of the strings, like that pluck per se. You hear the strings as if they're more of a thicker instrument. And it sounds more thick, the vocals sound thicker, even female voices somehow sound thicker. So I wouldn't say this is the most accurate presentation by any stretch of the imagination, but personally, it sounded enjoyable. Uh, especially when you listen to vocals with like those thick male vocals, the, the, that undertone, that undertone under the voice made it sound more thick and more uh, raspy in a way. And there's some kind of a little bit of that alluring uh, kind of mid-range tone to this combination that doesn't exist with any other speaker that I'll be mentioning. So this is a particularly a acquired taste, I would say. And if you really like that mid-range, well, then you're gonna really like the treble as well because the treble has this a little bit of blooming effect, almost like imagine fireflies in the night sky, <laughs> um, it's bloomy. And it's not sharp, it, like I said, it's bloomy. And it's sweet sounding. So it's a very nice kind of um, musical sound, I would say. It is a particularly, again, acquired taste and some people may think that it's too colored and it's just not accurate and it will drive them insane. But personally for me, if I just let that go and sit down and listen to it, I thought this combination was simply just very musical sounding and enjoyable for long periods of uh, time. Now going slightly up in price, but also the time required to build this because this is a kit loudspeaker where you buy the kit and you build it yourself, was the CSS One TDX. And recently I got it redone to this bird eye maple kind of finish 
on this loudspeaker and it just looks gorgeous. Now I'm particularly glad that I tried this combination because the 1TDX sounds really good with the Galleon. And this would be my top pick for that $1,000 to $1,500 category. Now, like I mentioned, the Galleon TSA A75 has a little bit of that V-shaped sound and that mid-range, not so much that it's recessed in volume, but it's pulled back into the soundstage really far. So you have this deep sense of soundstage, but also that mid-range is a little bit soft sounding. So it feels a little bit too far on some tracks and with some pairings, it's too much of a good thing. And we'll talk about some of those speakers later in this video. But with the CSS1 TDX, it doesn't sound as far back. It just sounds just right, like a private venue. And it really makes that depth in the sound stage of the CSS1 TDX match perfectly with the Galleon. And it doesn't sound as recessed. So you still get a little bit of that edge and you, it's, it's very nice. It's, to me, perfect. And the width of the soundstage is no exception. It sounds just open and wide, deep, just sounds right with this speaker. It's an absolute delight, and I really like the soundstage presentation, especially with this combination. In terms of the bass, the bass is spectacular with this combination. I love the mid-range and high-frequency presentation, but I love the bass presentation with this combination even more. It fattens up the bass slightly, it's deep and textured in extension, but again, it makes that bass a little bit more fatter sounding, and that makes it sound more muscular. It's not so fat that it feels like sloppy and boomy, but it's just enough to add that a little bit more muscular presentation to the rest of the music, and that affects the mid-range as well, where the mid-range sounds a little bit more fuller and more richer. And this combination really makes the speakers shine at what it does really well in the mid-range and treble, but also kind of smooth out and make it a little bit more magical in that bass and treble. So I really personally thought this combination was excellent. Now going up to 1500 US dollars, we have the Bucard P300, which also has a passive radiator in the back. And it may look like the Bucard S400 Mark II, which I also tried with the Galleon, but we'll get to that. One thing about this speaker combination with the Galleon that stood out to me was that again, just like the CSS, the mid-range wasn't too recessed to the sound stage. It wasn't too pulled back into the sound stage where it felt like I needed to crank the volume up all the time for that mid-range to be leveled with the rest of the bass and the treble. So for me, this was a good medium to loud listening level kind of speaker. I wouldn't say that any of these speakers sounded really amazing at low, low volumes with the Galleon. So really the Galleon excels at medium to high levels and you know normal listening levels and a little bit above that when you wanna crank it. So the P300 I think was perfect for that, had plenty of bass and texture. I would say the most textured feeling kind of bass out of all these speakers I've tried, but not as visceral or impactful as the CSS1 TDX or its older brother, the Bucard S400 Mark II. And the soundstage was quite impressive, both depth and width as well. It gave a pretty spacious kind of presentation with the Galleon, but I would say that the imaging capability, like discerning and all those nuances and stuff like that, was bested by the CSS1 TDX, as well as the Bucard S400 Mark II in this case, uh, in comparison. And that's the only reason why it's not my first pick, but if Honestly, there, there's really not much complaint. The highs are more smooth than the Bacard S400 or the CSS1 TDX with this combination. And if you're someone that really don't like any kind of treble or nuance, you just want something that's relaxed in the high frequency, this combination, the P300 with the Galleon, will give you that. It's not so rolled off where it feels like there's nothing in the high frequency, but it's just smooth. It's so smooth. Now going up to that $2,000 mark is the ELAC Unify Reference. This was actually one of my first speakers I tried with the Galleon uh, and it was really good. I mean, I thought this combination was awesome until I tried other speakers that I found to be slightly better of a match. I think this is a really good match if you have the speakers and if you want a little bit more oomph and more gut to the sound out of it. The only thing is that I find the mid-range to be a little bit too pulled back in this case. I wish it was a little bit more forward, but it's 
a little bit too smooth in that mid-range. The high frequency is fine, it's snappy, it's quick, but that mid-range is slightly pulled back. Some people may like that presentation where the depth in the sound stage is a little bit more deeper. Uh, but overall, I thought this pairing was excellent. I feel like, you know, something like the Denim Frisp Thalo might be a better combination with the ELAC reference. But personally, the Galleon, if you want a little bit of, again, that boldness added in the bass especially, I thought this was a really good combination. Now with this combination in particular, one thing to watch out for is that undertone of the vocal. Not all speakers have this undertone with the Galleon, but I noticed that with the Galleon with the ELAC reference, did particularly have this undertone in the vocal. It had this bloom on the undertone, much like the Voyager TL, in that it had this kind of like, almost like a more muscular undertone, a little bit more bloom there. And for me, with male vocals, especially really musical, makes it sound more muscular and strong. Uh, it also interesting in the fact that it also existed with female vocals, which I didn't quite like because female vocals are not supposed to sound that muscular sounding in the undertone of the vocals. Um, and some people might find it a little bit not clean sounding. But personally for me, I thought it was quite musical. But something that you should be aware of is that undertone vocal with Galeon with this particular pairing. Now staying at the same price point at $2,000 is the Arendel 1723 THX-S monitor. And personally for me, this was the speaker that did it for me at this price point. $2,000 to that $2,500 mark. I mean, out of all the speakers I've tried, like I said, all of these were good pairings and that's why I'm mentioning them. But the Arendel with the Galleon, insane. I mean, you get everything. I mean, again, the vocal, uh, and that mid-range being recessed slightly, just slightly, so that's further back, but not too far. And the strings, the heft in the bass, the treble extension, the airiness, the feeling of spaciousness, this combination was simply amazing. Uh, just incredible. It sounded much higher end in a true giant killer system, if you will, and it just sounded just truly amazing, balanced, but at the same time, again, a little bit more bass juiciness and bloom, vocal, the thickness, but not none of that undertone going on, a little bit more cleaner sounding, but again, a little bit more thicker sounding overall, not just the undertone. And that high frequency extension, the sound stage width, the depth, the spaciousness, the holographicness, overall, this combination was fantastic. And out of all the speakers I've tried, this was the most skull-pounding mid-bass punch and dynamics out the wazoo. Deep, deep texture bass. And again, that clean, clean bass with just, just ever so slightly fattening of that bass from the Galleon made it just sound more rich in that mid-range as well. Again, all the nuances there. So everything I look for in a good system match synergy it was there and this was i would say the best pairing out of all the speakers regardless of the price point that i've tried with the galleon but there was a close second and that was the bacard s400 mark ii at 2300 us dollars now before i tried the arendel 1723 s monitor i personally found that the bacard s400 mark ii to have the deepest bass extension and just richness texture out of all the speakers I've tried. So naturally, this is the second best pairing that I would recommend highly. The bass is phenomenal with this pairing. If you felt that the Bacard S400 Mark II like, lacked a little bit of that fattening of the bass that the Mark I had, but you liked the soundstage and the depth that it provided, the more smoothness of the Bacard S400 Mark II, this is it. I mean, the bass, the treble, the mid-range presentation, Everything was excellent. And again, just like the P300, the Arendel, and the CSS 1TDX, the vocals and the mid range wasn't pulled so far back that I felt like I needed to crank up the volume all the time. But again, it did excel at that medium to high volume. I don't think any of these speakers really excelled at low volume with the Galleon. I'll say the 1TDX and maybe the Arendel did kind of make it okay at low volumes, but really all of these excelled at medium to loud volumes with the Galleon specifically. And the Bacardus 400 Mark II is no exception of that. 
but it just sounded so refined in the highs, the mid-range, smooth, liquid, just interesting to listen to with all that dynamics coming out. And I just thought this was a really good combination. But what made it more interesting with this particular combination was that snappiness in the high frequency. It was very fast sounding. It was still smooth, but not as smooth as the P300, but still smooth, very listenable, even at cranking loud volumes. But the speed, not necessarily the, the attack, like it's not like smacking you in the face with treble, but it was snappy in the sense that it was fast and quick, even though it was soft. And I thought that was interesting and that was a fun experience. Um, this combination did something that I ha really haven't heard that kind of treble presentation with the Bacard S400 Mark II specifically, where it's like soft and listenable and enjoyable liquid, but also fast in the high frequency. So I found, found that to be a very interesting and musical kind of presentation that this combination particularly excelled at. Now lastly, I tried the Monoacoustic Supermon Mini 2024 version. But the real reason I wanted to try this combination was to test the driving capability of the Galleon TSA A75. Because smaller the speaker, the harder it is to drive. People often believe that big tower speakers require more power because they're big, but it's actually the other way around. A big tower speaker is more sensitive and has better impedance and can get louder, but a small speaker to get loud and also deep into the extension of the bass requires to compromise on impedance and sensitivity most of the time. So a small speaker is actually harder to drive. And in this case, the Galleon TSA A75 absolutely drove the Supermon Minis into oblivion. Both at low volumes and high volumes, it had unbelievable bass for the size of the speaker. I mean, unbelievable. It was border getting close to like ELAC Unified Reference and much bigger monitor speakers. And it had full bold bass and pleasing tones in the bass texture from such a small loudspeaker. I mean, the speaker is like the size of my palm, but it was creating bass like it was a full size monitor. And so that was really impressive. It also had incredible sense of airiness and spaciousness that Supermon Mini is known for. But again, with that more airiness presentation of the Galleon added, I mean, the spacious airiness and the, the nuances coming at you was just absolutely a holographic, massive sound stage. This amazing, amazing projection of nuances floating in the air. Again, that firefly thingy, but way, way more like nuanced and detailed and just amazing, amazing uh, nuances and detail within the music that is presented just everywhere inside the room. So both the bass and treble, I was absolutely floored by. But the mid-range was a little bit too much of a good thing because the Supermon Mini already has that deep soundstage presentation. But with the Galleon, it pulled it back even further. Now the mid-range seemed a little bit too far and recessed. So I ended up needing to crank more and more and more. And so for me, at high volumes, yes, that made more sense. But at low volumes, I was getting fantastic bass and treble presentation, but the mid-range seemed a little bit too far away. So that's why it wasn't my favorite combination for this particular pairing. But if you don't mind or actually prefer a very, very deep soundstage, I think this was a probably the deepest soundstage I got out of the Galleon with any speaker. So that's pretty much it for me in terms of my experience with the Galleon TSA A75 for the last several months. If this video was helpful or enjoyable or any of the above, then please consider clicking the like button. It does help my channel out greatly and it doesn't cost you anything. And I hope to see you guys in my next journey, my next video, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Make sure to subscribe. Until next time. Oh, 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 oh,